All right, so here's what we know about Simon Peter. Uh, he, was, he was a great leader, I think we would all agree. But he didn't start out that way, right? So um, what we see in the end of his life isn't necessarily what we saw in the beginning of his life. I mean, you have to imagine that when Jesus was looking out over, over that lake and saw Simon Peter fishing and went and called him. I mean, you have to believe that there was even a little self-doubt in Jesus when he saw this guy. Um, but Jesus has a way, God has a way of seeing us for the potential we have or for the destiny that we have upon our lives, not where we are now, but what we can be and who we can be if we will fully, fully trust him. So today I hope that we learn through Simon Peter that where we are right now um, is hopefully not where we're going to be tomorrow and where we are tomorrow is hopefully not where we're going to be this time next year. Uh, my, prayer, my prayer for today is that God would help us to see uh, as you can see in that first fill in the blanks, that God did not create us to just be stagnant Christians, but he created us to be growing Christians. And we could say this about our leadership. He didn't call us to be stagnant in our leadership. People oftentimes grow stagnant in their, their leadership. They get the title. Or they, they, will, they will grow and, and they will strive to become better. Then they get the title and they stop striving to become better. They stop striving to grow and, and they find their leadership diminishing. Uh, we never reach a point where we need to stop growing in our lives and in our leadership capabilities. And I hope that we'll learn a little bit from Simon Peter about that today. 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I hope that's the challenge for us today to grow um, when we see when we see Simon Peter as I said we see a life of development I mean this is the guy this is the guy who uh, on one hand said man God I will follow you anywhere I will go anywhere with you I will do anything for you and yet we find him on the night that Christ was betrayed. He denied him three times. Um, we, we find that um, he heard Jesus speak about whosoever will, let him come unto me, right? I mean, Jesus, he, he heard Jesus speak this message over and over again. Uh, and yet Simon, Simon Peter, he was the same guy who even after the day of Pentecost, after they saw this great multitude come to Christ, he was the one that was still fighting against letting Gentiles come into the faith, right? Uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, you want to see Gentiles baptized. You remember the story of, of Cornelius, right? And you think, how could, how could, this, how could this man uh, who had such a close relationship heard Jesus speak be so against allowing the whosoever wills to come into the faith but we see that Simon was constantly growing um, growing in his in his faith we even see uh, one of the difficult experiences of his life in Matthew 16 uh, where where Jesus was announcing to the to the disciples hey this is this is what's going to happen right we're going to go to Jerusalem I'm going to be I'm going to be turned over to the chief priest and and I'm going to be I'm going to be put to death I mean that's what he's that's what he's telling his his guys and it tells us that Peter took Jesus aside. Can you imagine? I, I often like look at these stories and they just almost make you laugh. He took Jesus aside uh, and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine? But we, I shouldn't say we, I know I sort of do the same thing sometimes with God in my, with my life, but God, you you think you know what you're talking about, but really, there's a different way that would be so much better. 
right? And we sort of do that with God. We project our plans upon him and try to change his mind as if our ways were somehow going to be better than his ways. And this is really what Peter was doing in this, in this scenario. He was saying, Jesus, I know you think this is a valid plan, but let me, let me tell you a better way. You not going to the cross and dying is a better way to accomplish, to accomplish this. Um, but Jesus pulled him aside in verse 23 and turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Get, get, I mean, could stronger language be used? I mean, here, here is a man that has Jesus apparently sees potential on and says, hey, Simon, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And now he's saying, get behind me, Satan. I mean, what, what strong language? Uh, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of men. So, so here, we, here we find Peter just in this place of, of uh, still not, not fully getting it. Um, there's other examples of that as, as well. We, we, do see, we do see that uh, there's all this potential in his life, yet there's all these struggles and there's all these uh, sort of ups and downs that he has. So in some ways, I think that his life is a great example for us that uh, we might not be where we want to be as a leader, but we don't need to give up on the pursuit because God will continue to grow us and develop us to reach his f full potential if we'll but let him. Um, let me share with you a couple of leadership traits that I see in, in Peter that I think uh, can, can help us. Um, some of these, or a couple of these, might be things that seem reiterated from the weeks before. Uh, but I, I think we see uh, Peter having a great example of these, of these traits. Uh, the first thing I see in, in Simon Peter was he was a very curious person. Uh, a curious person. And I think, I think curiosity um, is, is a feature that all leaders need, right? It's something that, that all of us need. And I think we sort of see this in, in, in Peter when he's out on that boat and he sees Jesus walking on the water. Um, all the other guys are, are in the boat sort of hunkered down, sort of looking at this ghostly figure on the water. And Simon Peter's like, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to do that. You know, and, and I mean, I've probably heard more messages about uh, Peter walking on the water uh, in a negative connotation. But the truth is, um, he's the only person besides Jesus that I know of in recorded history that's ever done it. Right. There was this curiosity inside of him that allowed him to have this big faith at times. Now, when you have that kind of curiosity, there's obviously risk involved. Sometimes you might be disappointed. Sometimes you might falter like he did. But listen, I love the slogan that says, you know, you uh, so what if you reach for the stars and you just touch the sky? That's not uh, that's not that bad of a place. Right. And certainly we see this in, in Simon Peter. I like what John MacArthur said in 12 Ordinary Men. People who are content with what they don't know happy to remain ignorant about what they don't understand, complacent about what they haven't analyzed, and uncomfortable living with problems they haven't solved. Such people cannot lead. Uh, I believe that leaders should always be hungry for answers. Uh, and this is something that we see sort of built into the DNA of, of Simon Peter. Um, he was... He was a problem solver. He was, he was curious enough to express him, his faith in a way that would step out on unknown waters. And I encourage you to look for ways to do that in your own personal walk, in your own personal leadership avenues, whether it be in your class or in your family. Uh, look for ways to just sort of develop that curious mind where you're trying something new or stepping out into a place that you've never been uh, before. Um, I read an article a while back that, that talked about, uh, it might have been in one of the magazines laying around here somewhere, but it talked about how sometimes longevity in, in teaching 
um, can 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 produce uh, sort of this place of complac this place of complacency in in some teachers, right? Where they teach so long that they just rely on what they've always done, rather than finding new and curious ways to bring material to to students. So I think all of us can be challenged to make ourselves curious in our leadership, in, in our classrooms, uh, and let that pour over to a fresh expression of what we do and who we are. Uh, the second thing I see in, in Peter was he was an initiator, an initiator. Um, an initiation or initiative is something I think that is necessity for, for leadership. Uh, a leader needs to be ambitious and they need to have a drive and an energy to them. Um, we often find this when Peter would ask or when Jesus would ask questions of the disciples. Um, Peter oftentimes would be the one who would just stand up first and want to give an answer, right? He was the, the first one to, to just sort of speak out. When the, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, we find, you know, Peter, he was, he was thinking the revolution starts now, right? We're, gonna, we're going to take these Roman soldiers out. And uh, man, he just started slicing and dicing. And probably not the right methodology, but it goes to show how, what a person of action he was. Um, and, and he was an initiator, which I think is an incredible, um, an incredible trait of, of any leader. And the third thing we see is that, that Peter was committed. He was committed. Um, someone once said that true leaders are always found where the action is. And we, we certainly see this with Peter. And we read a couple scriptures earlier that talked about um, Peter and some of the struggles he had, right? And we even read one verse where it says, Jesus speaking to Peter says, hey, Peter, Satan has come uh, and is trying to sift you as wheat. Well, sort of like what we see in, in Job's life, right? And, and uh, this, is, this is what Satan is wanting to do to you. And we see that scripture where Jesus rebuked Peter and said, hey, get behind me, Satan. So we see that there were definitely struggles there. We find that he was very reluctant to see Gentiles come into the faith and be baptized uh, in, into the faith. Um, but what we find is there was a commitment to Christ that even when he didn't have proper understanding or proper practices in his faith, he kept pursuing this idea of, of growing in Christ, becoming more like Christ. He was committed to truly being a Christ follower. And, and as a result of that, uh, we find that when he gets to the end of his life, not only is he willing to lay his life down for the sake of Christ, but history tells us that literally uh, as, as, he is, as he is about to be uh, executed, he has to watch his wife be tortured and crucified in front of him. All he has to do is recant to see this madness stop, right? But he's so committed to the faith, knowing that his life is about to be taken, and he has to watch his own wife's life be taken in such a horrible uh, way and then laying down his own life uh, for the sake of Christ that he, he believed in so, so very much. I think when it came to the end, uh, a scripture that really uh, sort of epitomizes who Peter was is that he was a man who really did go from just sort of being zealous and passionate to truly a loving follower of Christ. Uh, 1 Peter 4.8 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. And I think that Peter kept experiencing the love of Jesus and this love uh, kept him loving others and doing, doing the work of God in such a great way. So today I want to challenge you to stay curious, be, be, an, initi be an initiator, and stay committed. No matter, no matter the circumstances, and you will find yourself being a more powerful and a sharper leader in all that you do. Let's pray. God, we love you, and we thank you for your goodness. We ask you now, Lord, to help us. Uh,
to be people who are committed to growing, not only in our faith, but in the leadership abilities you've given us. You've placed a calling on all of our lives. And even if we don't see ourselves as leaders, the calling that you have put upon us is a calling of leadership. No matter how small the circle is, we're leading. We are leading people. Help us, God, to lead them well and lead them in a way that would bring you glory. Let us be like Simon Peter, Lord, who stayed curious in his, in his faith. Lord, who was an initiator, who didn't just sit back and wait on things to happen, but he jumped up and made things happen. Sometimes it was a little reckless, but he was willing to step up and, and give it a try. And he was certainly committed, even to the point where it cost him his life. But he did so because he believed in your love and he believed that he could, he could show that love um, as he was committed to serving others. So God, we just ask you to help us to develop those same kind of traits in us that we might be a better leader today. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.